These gloves let me use my hands in virtual reality. Stick around to find out how you can get your own for really cheap. Being able to just put on a pair of gloves and go pick up an object in virtual reality and actually feel it in your hand is every VR fanatic's dream. This isn't just something out of Ready Player One either. There are actual companies that are working on this kind of technology. The problem is all of the existing haptic gloves out there are inaccessible to most people right now because they're super expensive and they're only being sold to professionals. So your odds of owning any of these are probably way lower than your odds of finding any of these in stock. I'm obsessed with VR myself and I really wanted that experience, so I decided to just try to build some VR gloves of my own. This started as just a fun project for me to work on by myself, but now it's become a mission for me to help make VR haptic gloves affordable for the average consumer. The VR haptic glove I'm working toward creating is one that's gonna have both finger tracking and haptics so that you can pick up an object and feel it in your hand. I'm making a lot of progress on the force feedback and Bluetooth side of things, but today I'm gonna run you through the first phase, which was finger tracking. These gloves are my third prototype, and the parts cost me less than $22. That's $11 per hand. My gloves are already compatible with VR games like Half-Life Alex, and they're a lot of fun. Now let me show you how I got this far. There are lots of different ways we could try to track the fingers, but the most commonly used for this kind of application is flex sensors. The problem with these is they're extremely expensive, as they're about $10 each, so that would be 100 or more for the whole hand. So I decided to go with the simplest approach possible, pulling string. This solution is super cheap because we can use mechanical parts to measure how far the string is pulled. And when we add haptics in, the string can pull back on your fingers to make you feel everything you're holding. So how do we actually measure the string? Well, we're going to need one of these. This is called a potentiometer. It's the same thing you'd find on the volume knob of an electric guitar. It changes its electrical resistance based on how far it's turned. And that's something we can measure with some electronics. And now all we have to do is take off this knob and replace it with a spool and tie some string to it. And now we can measure how far the string is being pulled, which represents how far your finger is closed. The next thing to do is make sure that the string retracts when I open my hand so that we have an accurate representation of where my fingers are. And for that I use these. These are retractable badge reels that I got for about 30 cents each online. As you can see, they keep tension on the string so they'll be great for what we need them for. All right, so this was my first proof of concept for the glove, what I call prototype zero. Basically what I did is I 3D printed some little caps and rings that go on around my fingers and guide the string. And then I hooked up the string to badge reels just to make sure that when I close my fingers, it actually does pull the string. And it looks like it's working pretty well. Now it's time to add potentiometers for the first real prototype. So this is prototype one. Since I kept the reels intact and all in one piece, you can see it's a lot bulkier than it needs to be, but it still gets the job done as far as testing and making sure that it actually works. This prototype was definitely bulky and uncomfortable though, since the strings were pulling really hard back then. From here, I started adding electronics to measure how far the fingers are actually closed. So here's how it works. The gloves are powered off of this little computer called an Arduino. The Arduino can be connected to the potentiometers and can measure the electrical resistance in each one of them. This gives us the information we need to calculate where the finger should be. Then it sends that data over to my PC using a USB cable, though I'll eventually be switching to Bluetooth. This is a Python program that I wrote that takes the data from the Arduino and actually builds a hand based on where your hand is in real life. It's glitchy, but it works. Clearly there were a lot of things to work on as far as how reliable and comfortable it was, so that's mainly what I focused in Prototype 2. To fine tune the tension on the springs and to shrink it down a little, I started experimenting with taking apart the badge reels. This is what the inside looks like. It's a spool of string with a rotary spring inside of it. The spring is the reason that it springs back when it's twisted. So I took out the spring and I reverse engineered the design into my glove. Can you guys spot the similarities? Now the potentiometer is spring loaded and just with the right amount of tension. This is a huge improvement. Now you can see the spool springs back really well. Now after putting a cover on it, it mounts really easily. This time it's a lot more comfortable because the spring is looser than it needed to be before. This design also conformed to the shape of my hand better, so it was a lot more comfortable in that way too. This is also when I started using actual glove materials to make it a lot easier to put on. Now let's talk about actually getting the gloves to work in VR because there was a ton of work that had to go into that. My Python demo was just a tiny start. Currently my gloves are working in VR using a custom Steam VR driver that I originally programmed by myself. 
Basically the way it works is it gets the data from the Arduino, just like the Python demo, except not only does it need that, but it also needs the position of the hands. So it gets those by either using a tracker, like a SteamVR or a Vive tracker, or it uses something like an Oculus controller that you can just strap to your hand, and it gets the position from there. This was actually a really tricky process to program because the documentation out there for SteamVR drivers isn't that great. I was able to get mine working, but it was certainly a tricky process with a lot of bugs to fix. Luckily, a user from our Discord server, Dan Willem, told me he was inspired by my glove and made one of his own, and was working on a driver himself. After we both had our drivers working, we decided to merge our projects into an open source VR glove driver that anyone can use for a DIY VR glove. Here it is working in Unity with Prototype 2. You can even pick up and throw objects. The glove displays your hand using something called SteamVR Skeletal Input. This is the same way that Valve Index controllers work. This is what lets the glove be compatible with so many games out there. Here you can see Prototype 2 and Half-Life Alex. Object interactions feel pretty natural, and you can use it to go through menus as well. Take a look at the joystick I put on the side of my finger that I can use for walking around also. Works well in Pavlov too. You can also use gestures for shooting in Pavlov as well. Clearly Prototype 2 was still pretty bulky, so I made a lot of size improvements in Prototype 3, as you can see. With this design, the spring actually fits inside the spool, so the design is a lot more compact. I'm also experimenting with lubricating the design so that it springs back a lot better too. As you can see, the wiring is a lot better this time too. Before it used to be really messy, but I added some conduits in to organize it a little better. Definitely a huge improvement and it's working great in game. Here it is in SteamVR Home, also Half-Life Alex, and also Pavlov VR. And of course I built two of them so that I could get both of my hands working in VR. Here's what it looks like with both hands in VR. It's really liberating to have both of your hands tracked and it's a lot better than camera-based solutions that have problems with occlusion, like when your hand covers itself. Now here's how you can get these gloves right now. If you're impatient and you don't want to wait for Prototype 4 to come out with the force feedback, and you just want the finger tracking right now, I'm putting the models out so that anybody can build their own. Currently as a student, I'm not really in a position that I can actually sell these gloves right now, but I still want to get these gloves out to as many people as possible. So I'm putting out resources for everybody to build their own. I'm putting out all of the STL files for 3D printing, as well as all the code to actually get it working in VR. In addition, I've been posting resources to make it easier for people to make their own gloves. I want to make YouTube tutorials on here, so subscribe if you want to see those, but I'm also posting a bunch of resources on my GitHub page as well. Okay. For my next glove, Prototype 4, it's going to have Bluetooth and force feedback haptics. So that means no wires connecting you to your PC, and also you can pick up an object in the game and it'll actually stop the strings, meaning it'll stop your fingers so you can actually feel what you're holding. I'll be posting more about that soon, so definitely stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching the video all the way to the end, and a special thank you to all my patrons, especially Matthew, Jordan, and Anthony for being beater level patrons. Definitely check out the TikTok if you want to see live updates on the glove progress, and stay tuned because I'm going to be posting a lot more.